Well, hello there. Welcome to a Big Four First Impression Friday. Vogue has dropped their winter collection. I've done my absolute very best to avoid any spoilers before I could film this. So let's jump right into it. We have a Mrs. and Mrs. Petite special occasion dress. Now, Remember, we've talked about this before, but Vogue is going to be your high fashion, your couture, your special occasion, um, tailored, very sort of high society type of style. So if you're looking for, you know, a pandemic, quarantine, comfy fashion, you're probably gonna be a little disappointed. But if you are here for the glam moments, you're in the right place. So this dress is clearly no exception, especially because they made the sample in some kind of like glittery fabric, which is so pretty how it's like ombre. But this dress is a close fitting line dress, has a raised waist seam, which I think is right here. So raised just a little bit. Bishop sleeves ending in cuffs with button and bias loop closing. Button and bias loop closing. Okay, contrast lining. Contrast lining? Do we, I mean, is an all lining contrast? Neckline and hem piping detail. What does that mean? Separate pattern pieces for cup sizes. Okay, let's take a look at the photos and see if we can discern some of these details. Hem piping, I'm guessing because it's meant to be sewn with some kind of like sequin fabric, you have to finish the hem in some way, almost like a hem facing, but maybe there's like an itty bitty piping in there. I've never seen that. Have you guys? And then this says ra raised waist seam, but honestly, it kind of looks to be at her natural <laughs> waist. Um, and then you have these beautiful, truly beautiful sleeves. They did not mention this little keyhole, which is also really, really nice. There's got to be some kind of like zipper somewhere. Uh, yeah, in the center back. You also have this little pleat so that you can walk. Um, maybe we can see the button and loop detail. Yeah, can you see? They even used rhinestone buttons. So pretty. So, so pretty. Yeah, and the way that they did it with this ombre, ombre fabric is just so pretty, how they match the sleeves to the bodice and everything. Interestingly, I feel like this bodice and even the skirt fits this model better than this one. You can see how much looser it is on her, but the sleeves fit this model better than this one. On her, they're a little bit short um, and less like billowy in a way but the dress looks great on her. And then of course they put the other model on <laughs> the cover. Oh, this is a Badgley Mishka. Okay, great. Well, no wonder the fabric selection is so impeccable. This is probably their sample, Badgley Mishka sample. So this dress costs, you know, several hundred, if not thousands of dollars. So that makes sense. Um, you do have bust darts. You also have uh, darts in the skirt in the back. And then they have highlighted this piping detail. That's all I can think of. Oh, you have it on the cuffs too. Is that it's just to help um, sew the sequins. Okay, so let's look at the yardage. Honestly, like up front, it's pretty much a very basic dress with, you know, a sleeve that we've seen a thousand times. But you make it in a special fabric like that and all of a sudden you're just like, wow, you know. So two-way stretch knit fabrics, sequin mesh, rayon spandex, or stretch velvet. Contrast one is this contrast lining. Um, so they're recommending lightweight jersey or trico. And then contrast two is a stretch mesh. So there's two different linings. Hard to tell which goes where, just from the information we're given here. But, you know, obviously a couture detail here. Invisible zipper, nine shank buttons, and one hook and eye, two uh, size ranges, eight to 16, and then 16 to 24. So it looks like we're back to overlapping the highest and lowest size, which I actually really prefer. Um, 
And then you have your yardage here and then no finished garment measurements. So very pretty. I don't know how hard it would be for us, you know, home so as to find a fabric this pretty, but um, certainly something comparable. All right, next up we have more of like a gown. Tell me the gloves are included. We have a fitted through bust bias cut. You guys, I've talked about bias cut a million times. Every time I see it, it makes me so excited. Beyond universally flattering. And I'm not talking just like, oh, that looks really nice. But like, if you have curves, your body will never look as good as it does in a bias cut dress. Okay, it has a sweetheart neckline finished with narrow facings. Empire waist bodice with front gathers, invisible back zipper, and a baby hem. Okay. So, look how pretty this little bodice is. Kind of scoops up like this. They're calling it a sweetheart neckline. I don't know. This looks more like a deep V to me. But, um, baby, fa they're, what do they call them? Narrow facings. So, I think that, I don't know. It kind of operates like bias tape, but... I don't know. I don't know how narrow we're talking here, but definitely some top stitching involved in that detail. But I do love how this kind of like has a curve to it and you have these gathers that are more at like the center rather than sometimes you'll see them below the bust down here. This just creates such a cleaner look in my opinion. Um, but yeah, the bias cut is really, really beautiful, kind of flares out a little bit and then you have a baby hem. It didn't mention anything about the gloves being included, which is highly disappointing because <laughs> that would have been amazing to be able to make gloves that match your dress. But it looks like, yeah, these are probably purchased. Um, this on her is a little bit too short through here. You can see, I think her bust in somewhere down here. It doesn't quite fit in like it did on the red dress. But yeah, this looks incredible on her. Really, really pretty. And obviously this fabric is also a little bit weightier, a little bit heavier than this one. This one has a lot more drape to it. And you can see how this one has less drape, but still equally beautiful. Yeah, and the, the red dress did have like a satin situation up top here. And then, um, or scratch that, reverse it. Uh, satin situation here and this was like a velvet which you could use like a crepe back satin and that's like one fabric and you just use the reverse sides or maybe even like the reverse side of a velvet and then the velvet side um lots of options there <clears throat> in terms of like finding contrast all right yardage so crepe back satin like i mentioned jacquard that's actually an interesting um suggestion because the when you when you have jacquard once it's like the reverse it's like the negative sides you know like what is uh, dark and filled in on one side will be light on the other and then rayon velvet i've actually never even heard of rayon velvet before sounds amazing um and then all you need for notions is a 12 inch zipper and then the two size ranges again. So, and then just a little bit of fabric for your bodice and then your skirt and then all together, you would need this amount. Really pretty. All right, next is the top that they had on the cover of the website. This is Mrs. Shirt by Julio Cesar. Peplum shirt fitted through bust and waist has collar and collar stand front and back waistline tucks and concealed front button closure. Bishop sleeves with gathered sleeve cap have tucks forming a cuff with invisible zipper opening. Invisible zipper opening in the cuff? That's cool. High, low hem. Okay. So this is your like... <laughs> The, your uh, button up white, you know, business type of shirt on steroids, you know, like you could wear this in all the same places you would wear like a crisp button down shirt, but this is going to certainly turn some heads and make you stand out in a way that a regular shirt would not. So you have this exaggerated stand 
um, with the three buttons. Some people may or may not like that. Some people might feel a little bit like, you know, that's like choking me. Uh, plus you have to be careful with your makeup application on your like under part of your chin so it doesn't get on your white shirt. But you have like the nice big collar. This is the hidden button band. And then just all of these pleats. Um, they look to be spaced about, I don't know, an inch, three quarters of an inch apart all the way around the waist and then they're just released and that's what creates the room for the bust and then the peplum at the bottom. And then like they said, bishop sleeves with an invisible zipper in this cuff. So they paired theirs with leggings. That makes perfect sense. Here it is in the back. Certainly like, you know, a little, a little napkin-ish, you know, when they like, when they do accordion fold the napkins and then set them out on the table. That's kind of what that reminds me of. They did say a gathered sleeve cap. Oh yeah, you can see it. Very, very, very tight gathers. So there's that. Obviously a very specific style to this top. I mean, I don't think everybody is going to be running to make this, but very vogue. Okay, broadcloth, cotton shirting, poplin, and then you have some feasible interfacing maybe in the cuff and collars, and then all your buttons and zippers and double fold bias tape somewhere in there too. And then the same size range as before, four yards of fabric for this shirt. That's crazy. But yeah, I mean, when it starts out, I bet these pattern pieces are enormous. And then, you know, you cinch in, cinch in, cinch in, and all of a sudden you have like a cute little fitted shirt. Okay, what do we have next? We have this little number. Mrs. and Mrs. Petite top. Look at that. Funnel neck top fitted through bust has side front and side back seams. Side front and side back seams. Pleated, pleated puff sleeves with link variations, shaped hemline, and center back zipper. Separate pattern pieces for your bust, for your bust cups. Okay, so funnel neck with a center front seam all the way up. I love a funnel neck. Then you have this exaggerated sleeve with pleats in the sleeve cap. Um, this is, they called it a side front and side back. It's kind of like a princess seam. That's where you get all your shaping. And then a two piece sleeve, or is that one piece sleeve? Just a one piece sleeve. I hope that they have some kind of dart in the elbow here. That would certainly help. Oh, here it is in a print with a shorter sleeve. That's a little bit more like every day, right? Like I would wear that to Target. Just a more casual fabric. Yeah, cute. I think this fabric too is a little bit drapier, so it's not standing away from her body as much as the white one is. Here's the back. I don't I, I don't know why anyone does these um, inseam zippers like this. What is it called? It's not a lapped zipper. It's the other one. Oh, shoot. I can't remember the name right now. It just looks so bulky. But maybe they thought this fabric was too bulky for invisible zipper. I don't know. But the zipper stops down here. So it's not, you know, like a jacket where it comes completely undone. You do have a zipper stop. And then you have your um, shaping in the back as well. Really pretty. Yeah, that's what's able to give you this really nice figure. Yeah, and then that same zipper. I also wonder, do we need a zipper that goes past the waist? I mean, maybe, I don't know, but there they are side by side. And then here are our line drawings. I think it's really quite cute, especially in the right kind of fabric. You could definitely make something that, you know, makes a statement, but not like crazy. Okay. Yardage. Linen blends, broadcloth cotton satin also never heard of that and then brocade so other i mean linen blends could be a little bit lighter weight these other ones are pretty structured um so i would include 
some other fabrics in there, even cotton blends, like a cotton rayon blend would be good. Um, something with like in the middle, like not a rayon chalet. I think that would be way, way, way too drapey for the bodice, but something like in the middle range of structure, I think would be really good. All right, so same size ranges. Here are your fabric requirements. Yeah, not that much fabric considering how much volume those sleeves have. Okay. Next, we have, all right, so full disclosure, it was nearly impossible to avoid seeing this jacket because this particular version here is a, I hate to use the word knockoff, it is heavily inspired by the jacket that Kamala Harris's daughter wore to the inauguration. I pulled it up so you guys could see. Here is her version. It's by Miu Miu. Um, clearly not everybody can afford Miu Miu, but people are <laughs> criticizing Vogue for um, so closely making a, like a, an inspired by version. Now, all of us who sew are probably like, this is why we sew so that, you know, we can get dis designer inspired looks at home for like a fraction of the price. People who don't sew, people in fashion, people who are like, you know, really supportive of, you know, designers creativity and all of that kind of stuff are feeling a little bit like, no, you should, if you want this coat, you should buy it from Yu Mew. So two sides of the story, very controversial right now on um, the social media, you know, interwebs. Nonetheless, they get, they do give us alternate versions. So we'll be able to see it without like the exact, I mean, they didn't, they didn't try and hide the fact that we're trying to make this look like this jacket. I mean, with the white collar, the Fabric is nearly identical. The stones are the same color. I mean, they're very clearly saying, like, make that inauguration coat with this. Um, so I appreciate the fact that they weren't trying to be secretive about it. Um, so, yeah. I, I have a feeling we're all going to be on the same side of this argument. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. You know, they it's not the first time that we've seen like designer inspired looks, nearly exact replicas. Um, so all that to say, let's analyze this coat for what it is, regardless of the Mew Mew version, right? Like if I didn't know that, if I didn't remember seeing that coat at the inauguration and thinking, oh my God, what a cool coat. What would I think of this coat is where I'm trying to come at this from which is going to be hard because it's, you know, hard to not be biased. But the description is lined coat, loose fitting through bust and waist, has decorative top button, snap front closure, shoulder pads, raglan sleeves, welt pocket and flap with length variations. View B has a contrast upper collar and then optional assorted sew on rhinestones. Okay, so here she is. We have, like they mentioned, these little rhinestones that are sewn on. Um, the contrast collar, which I think it has to have a stand in it, right? Um, you have this single button up here, and then all the rest of the buttons are hidden. Um, considering how small this plaid is, they did a pretty good job of matching across. Then you have your pockets with the flaps. And then this one comes down to below the knee, sort of like a midi length. I mean, it's a look, right? It is a whole look. I, I do appreciate how like tailored it is. You have these princess seams here. Um, you get the waist shaping. Um, the raglan sleeves give it a little bit more of like a, and well, the raglan sleeves plus the, the shoulder pads definitely give it more of a statement shoulder, even without the rhinestones. Um, so you have like a wider shoulder, narrower waist, you know, and then A-line kind of hip. Um, so it's definitely intended to be a very figure flattering coat. Here it is just sort of like 
I'll call it plain Jane. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, it's got a little bit of like a mod vibe, right? Are we not picking up like 50s, 60s style here? Um, when you take away like the plaid and the contrast collar and the rhinestones, this is what you're left with. This is also the knee length version. So I think proportionate wise, it's a little bit better. Um, but I'm definitely, I think probably because the height of these pockets, like how they're hitting at the high hip and the raglan sleeve and the single button with everything else being covered is definitely giving me like mid-century vibes. They paired it with a knee-high boot, which kind of, you know, if these were in patent leather, that's the only thing that would make it more um, 50s, 60s, right? Here's the back view. So you do have a center back seam, also these princess seams. The pocket kind of wraps around a little bit. That's kind of cool. Um, and then your contrast collar again. And then this one again is the longer version. Yeah, this sleeve is, I mean, we got a raglan sleeve, so it's meant to be a little bit, you know, loose, but this looks kind of sloppy. I don't know what happened through here. This sleeve looks okay. This one is, is strange. I don't know if it's because how it's falling off her shoulder. It might, the sleeve might just be too big on her. I mean, look how long it is. Well, it's kind of that long on her too. She's got her hand pulled away from her body, which would clean up some of the folds in the fabric. So I don't know. I don't know about that sleeve. That just looks really sloppy to me there though, right? I mean, what is this? This one here is just, maybe this one's okay, but what is this? <clears throat> All right, so there they are. Yeah, it's 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 a look, right? It's one of those jackets that even if you made it out of this fabric, or even if you made this version, um, it would be hard to not make it look special. It's going to look special no matter what fabric you put it in. Even that, you know brown you know like I mean brown is like the most unspecial color right <laughs> even that brown color it looked like you would wear that and people would look twice you know what I mean like just the shaping you know the nod to the 50s like you know you'd be making a statement even in drab brown um so you can imagine if you made it in another color green oh my god green so pretty blue red any of that kind of stuff this version clearly is like special occasion um, and you know, only the true diehard fashionistas are going to say, Oh, is that Mew Mew? And then you go, no, I made it. And then people will say, that's so cool. You know, I think only like real, real fashion. I don't want to use the word snobs, but real people very, very, very into fashion and the industry and all of that are going to like turn their nose at the fact that you made a designer knockoff. Okay, wool flannel, gabardine, tweed, and then contrast for B um, for the collar is PK or satin. Interfacing is fusible interfacing, and then lining is just, they just call out lining. Um, so you have to get raglan shoulder pads, different than regular shoulder pads, snaps, and then one, one and one quarter inch button, and then your rhinestones if you're going to go for that option. You could also do the rhinestones without the contrast collar. Just do the matching collar and rhinestones. That would still be equally pretty, in my opinion. So, and then here are your fabric requirements. Um, B is the longer version. So five, or well, three and three quarter yards of fashion fabric. Um, and then the shorter version, three and one eighth for that. Okay, now that that one is out of the way, I feel I feel a lot better because, like I said, it was hard to avoid seeing that. Um, and then once you see it once, you can't, you know, not see it. <laughs> All right, so this is another coat, um, lined, double-breasted, fit and flare coat is semi-fitted at the bust and has collar with collar band instead of a stand. And I think I'll be able to show you guys the difference. Princess seam, raglan sleeves again, 
side seam pockets, flared lower back, flared lower back. That'll be interesting. And then length variations. Okay. So clearly double breasted here. The raglan sleeve coat, I gotta say, I really like a raglan sleeve coat, not only for like the figure flattering that it does, but it's like a million times easier to sew, right? Like trying to sew wool in a set in sleeve that's super tailored. Oh, it like it's very, very frustrating. Um, but this is the collar band versus a stand. Um, I can't zoom in anymore, but it's basically like a super small stand, if you want to think of it that way. It I don't think it's that much easier to sew. It just gives a slightly, um, it's just like a different, a different look. This collar here is cut and sewn in a way that promotes the rollover of the collar, which is why it's coming up so high on her neck, even though the stand is so small. Does that make sense? If you, once you make a collar like this, then all of what I'm saying makes sense. Um, it's kind of magical how the collar comes together, but um, I do think the stand is a nice little detail. Maybe it goes back to like the, I don't know, 20s or 30s. I'm not so good at like history fashion and stuff, but um, you can imagine like coats from back then having this little like feminine detail, especially with the little clasp. Um, certainly you don't have to clasp it and I wonder if they'll show us some pictures of this open but when it's double breasted you know you get this like wrap kind of situation at your neckline really pretty um and then princess seams through here side seam pockets they mentioned just a regular um hem <clears throat> and then on the bottom hem is a little bit more narrow um even through the facing so all right here's a longer version Clearly in a lighter weight fabric as well because this is all laying flat. Oh, and also, okay, so this is it. This is it unclasped. So you have it um, where a little bit more of your neckline shows. Super pretty. I can't go in anymore, like I said, so you guys can see that stand. But um, you can see what it looks like when it lays flat. And then they did these little accent buttons. You can kind of see the lining in here. And then this is the longer length. I want to see the back so badly to see what that flared back looks like. Oh, so now I'm getting, um, not Victorian, but like early 1900s, right? Like with this little panel, that's really cute. I love a little circle skirt moment. It's a lot in the in the fuller length. I mean, a lot, a lot. But again, this is one of those coats where no matter what fabric you make it in, it's going to look special. You can't help yourself. Okay, and these are the line drawings. Look at all these details with the seaming. Center back seam, raglan sleeve, princess seams, this guy here. Like, a lot going on. So, so, so pretty. All right, wool blends, jacquard, medium weight denim. Ooh, denim? That would be interesting. But still fancy. Like, even in denim, I think it would still look, like, special. And then interfacing and lining, seven one-inch buttons and one hook and eye. Same sizing so far for every pattern. And then three and a quarter yards up to almost six, depending on your the length that you choose cute. All right, now we've got a little bit more of a casual situation. Look at that collar. My goodness. Okay. Very loose fitting unlined jacket has dual separating front zipper. So it zips as two zipper tabs, zips up and down from both ends. Uh, raglan sleeves with continuous lap opening, ending in button cuffs. Okay, what? Raglan sleeves with continuous lap opening ending in button cuffs. I think that that is the same as like, like a button down shirt, right? Don't they have a continuous, I don't know, we'll have to look. Inside drawstring waist, side seam pockets, stitched hems, and length variations. View A has large pointed collar with collar stand. View B has self-lined hood with drawstring. These collars, what do we think? 
What do we think? Although, also, is this some kind of like vegan leather? My goodness, fancy. The collar, definitely. <laughs> it, um, yeah, it's a, I don't know. I don't hate it. I don't hate this version, but I can see us trying to make this and being like, yeah, this collar is ridiculous. But out of this fabric, maybe even like this model and the the way that they styled her, I don't know. It's kind of cool. I don't know that I'm cool enough for this. Maybe that's the that's what I'm really getting at here. Um, okay, and then here's the longer version with the hood. So clearly, no, you would never even know that that collar existed. This is also in a much drapier fabric. And you can see, too, that the raglan sleeve, unlike the other two coats we looked at where the raglan kind of comes through here, this one is meant to be higher. Like it's a totally different shape. Still a raglan sleeve, but just a very different shape to give you more fabric through the upper bust. And also, look how low the arm size come. I mean, this is meant to be like oversized, loose, drapey situation. Even the uh, sleeve is like big and drapey. You know, it's okay. So imagine, okay, imagine we're on a vacation to like some ski resort in the 1980s. This girl would have been the freaking coolest girl in the entire resort, right? So that's the kind of vibe we should be <laughs> we should be channeling when and if we make this jacket. There's the back. So the back raglan does come around a little bit more. Um, and you can see how the collar kind of folds over. Even in this like, like very buttery pleather. Um, it's kind of holding the folds a little bit. Oh, and here is the continuous lap. So it's not a true um, sleeve, uh, what is that called? Placket. Um, it's more like bias tape gets wrapped around that opening and that is what creates the closure. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit here too. Then there she is with wearing the hood. I appreciate that they do that actually. Obviously, you know, we're not standing around taking pictures of us with our hood up like this, but I like to see the, sh the opening of the hood and how big it is. Um, because if you've ever made a hood where the opening is kind of wide, it never stays on. It, it just doesn't. You catch like the slightest drift of wind and it's coming off. Um, I also like to see how much space is back here because sometimes we're wearing ponytails or whatever it is and it's nice to have like a lot of extra space back there. So I like to see that. And then you can see the continuous lap here again. So interesting. Um, memorable, but not in a way where I feel like I'm going to be like running out and buying this. But maybe like I could be talked into it. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Synthetic leather, gabardine, wool crepe, or water repellent fabric. And then a lot of notions, my goodness. Um, two five eighths inch buttons for the sleeves, one quarter inch cording for the waist. Wait, wait, wait. One and three quarters of a yard for A and three and three quarters for B. Okay, then the, oh, because B also has it in the hood. Gotcha. And save scraps of interfacing for reinforcement. Just around like the openings of those, like where the cording goes in, you probably have like a, like an eyelet or something and they're wanting you to put interfacing in there. And then dual separating zipper at two different lengths. And then here's your two eyelets. All the sizes in one pattern and alphanumeric sizing as well. So small to 2X. And then here's your yardage. Kind of a lot, kind of a lot, but I think you can get like 
synthetic leathers like this for somewhat affordable. Some of these might be a little bit more expensive, but. Okay, now we have re-released a cape. I hate when they're not on actual models, but lined cape with or without shaped collar has slashed arm openings, concealed button and loop fastenings, length variations. View A has hook and eye closure. View B has button closure with bound buttonholes. Optional braid trim. Well, this is going to be one fancy cape, okay? You can see we've got the collar. We've got the big buttons. We've got the bias bound armhole opening, which is actually tacked closed probably a few inches through here. Um, and then open below that. Soups chic. Here it is in the cropped version. Still super chic. Uh, maybe this one is showing contrast fabric through here. I'm not entirely sure, but again, I mean, you have to make the hat, right? Obviously. <laughs> Circa 1963 on this one. I don't love capes um, simply because I find it very difficult to like move. Um, like you can't drive. You can't put your hands at 10 and 2, you know, on the steering wheel. You'd have to drive illegally. Um, you cannot put a bag on your shoulder. You cannot lift your arms above your head or really even above elbow length for any reason. Um, so it's you're really helpless. Um, you must have somebody there to help you with any of those things, whether that is your husband, one of your three to five children, a uh, butler or a driver. <laughs> I'm envisioning what those women in these pictures, what their lives are like, right? I mean, these three women definitely have help. Um, and you'd need that because you wouldn't be able to carry much in this little bag, you know, certainly not a cell phone, which they didn't even have back then. But nowadays, like you can't be fishing around looking for a cell phone in a bag like that. <laughs> but if you're just like going to a party, I guess, and like just planning on standing around. Okay, sure. You'd look great in your cape. But here we go. And yes, that black version does have contrast. Really, really cute collar and like the little pleats here, or I'm sorry, darts are really, really nice. Yardage wise, lightweight wools, wool flannel, double knit, brocade. So in interfacing, we don't see that very often. And then three large hook and eyes, four one inch buttons, six half inch buttons. This is for B. And then eight yards of novelty flexible braid. I think they must have used some like velvet braid in the illustration. Not a ton of fabric for the short one, but then obviously as we come down to the longer cape, um, four yards. So that's kind of a lot. All right. We have a men's jacket, which we will quickly take a look at. I don't fully, fully know a lot about men's wear. Um, this one, from what I can see, looks like it fits great. Definitely military inspired, right? I don't know many men. They're going to, I mean, this guy looks like a soldier, right? Um, so that's got to make a big statement. Here it is a little bit more like modern um with the buttons that aren't so militant and of course unbuttoned and stuff he's got his cool aviator shades on um it might be a little long in the shoulder again i don't know a ton about menswear i don't see why a woman couldn't also wear this jacket though so there's that i think you would just have to check the shoulder line and stuff but it even has this little back um belt thing and then a pleat And then the faux buttons, the buttons that don't work, non-working buttons, I guess they're called. So you can make that for the 
person in your life. Then we have this little jacket. Super cool. Do you literally have to button and unbutton these things to get in? Kind of like a straight jacket. Fitted line jacket has asymmetric peplum detail and bands with covered buttons and bound buttonholes. Hidden covered snap front closing, set in sleeves with turn back cuffs and shoulder pads. I can't tell you the last time I saw turn back cuffs. Right? So I think the answer to my question is yes. You definitely have to unbutton this one in order to get the jacket on. Those bound buttonholes sure are pretty. And then we have a princess seam here, maybe one here. We also have this little shape seam here. And then these might just operate with the snaps. I don't know if the buttons are actually on this part of the coat. They might be. So that's a very interesting coat to get in and out of, right? I'm sorry, jacket. The set-in sleeve looks pretty good. And then it's kind of like a grown-on neckline, kind of. Like, there's no seam there, but it does, like, you know, come up on her neck a little bit. Oh, and look at all these seams. So, totally just um, design. Like, I don't think there's any function to them whatsoever. But you have your center back seam, you have the rest of the uh, princess seam, and then the peplum thingamajigs stop. Like, they don't wrap around to the back. Um, which is nice, because, you know, you don't always like that, like, ruffly butt situation. Speaking of which, what is happening here? I'm going to move on from that. Um, so, yeah, cool. Very, um, I, it is a Claire Schaefer pattern. Okay, well, that makes a little bit more sense. But, yeah, I'm getting straight jacket vibes. So be leery of making this in like white canvas because <laughs> I think unless that's what you're going for, um, that could look very like a lot. But look how cool the style lines are. And certainly sewing this together has got to be either a lot of fun and really cool or like you want to rip your hair out because some of these curves are not the easiest to make. Two-piece sleeve also. I don't know. It's kind of cool. But is it cool enough to, like, make it? You know what I mean? Like, it's cool enough that I would try it on in the store, but I don't know that I would be buying the material, spending all that time making it. Like, again, maybe I'm not cool enough for that jacket. <laughs> okay, wool gabardine, which is kind of like a wool suiting kind of. So think about like suiting fabric weight, but made out of wool. And then also wool crepe. Um, I do think that you could also make it out of, oops, you could also make it out of like denims. Um, you could make it out of uh, actual suiting. Um, some kind of twill would be kind of cool. So it doesn't necessarily have to be wool. I think they say that because it's a winter pattern. Um, lightweight sew-in interfacing and then your lining fabrics. You do have shoulder pads. Just half inch shoulder pads though, not too, too big. Three 7 8 inch button forms to cover. So the 7 8 inch button cover kit probably. And then two 3 quarter inch button forms to cover. And then also five snaps. Whew. Um, same sizing as the rest of the patterns. And then here is your fabric requirements. Very interesting, very Vogue, very Claire Schaefer. Um, very cool. Yeah. That is one of those two that I could probably be convinced to make, but not really jumping out at like, got to get to the top of my to sew list. You know what I mean? All right, here we are into dresses, dress and tunic. Um, this is Today's Fit by Sandra Bettina, which you can probably tell just from looking at it with all the drape and the picks and the tucks and the all the stuff. Very, very Sandra. Um, dress and tunic with set in shirred sleeves. Side panel. Dress has twisted cowl neck. Tunic has neckline variation. And then purchased bottoms. <laughs> Pants, you mean? Okay. Thanks for clarifying, but... 
Um, hard to see the shirred sleeve, but I think it's shirred up this way. And then here's your twisted cowl. And then you have this little detail. And then of course, contrast fabric. Yeah, so you can see this shirring detail going up this way. And then they put the little pin tuck here. This is the tunic version, still making it in contrast fabrics. And then here's what the cowl neck does in the back. That is a lot. And then clearly no, um, I wonder what that says. Um, no uh, collar on this one. She also has her own like sizing situation. This too is kind of like a, is that called a, oh, I don't know. Some kind of like bubble-ish type of shape to this too. Whereas the tunic is just A-line. Um, but yeah, she has her own like uh, sizing thing. So you'll see that it's, yeah, A through J. Um, I've never made one of those. So I don't even know like where I fall into that. But she doesn't use the standard um, charts, size charts. Two-way stretch knit. Um, like stretch velour, drapey knits, mat jersey, elastic, steam a seam, all of that. So yes, it's a very uh, unique look that again, not everybody is pulling off, but I can see it on a very, I don't know, seasoned woman. Let's just call it that. Certainly got to be comfortable. All right, here is a... Mrs. and Mrs. Petite dress, lined fitted dress, epaulettes, which are the shoulder things, um, and center front banding with button trim, meaning the buttons don't work. Three piece set in sleeves with cuff detail, three piece set in sleeves, uh, patch pockets, invisible back zipper, separate pattern pieces for cup sizes. Okay, so just a little shift dress with some details, really, is what it is. You've got the shoulder detail, you've got the button band detail, you've got the patch pockets with the button here detail, and then the sleeves with the cuff, another detail. Yes, in contrast, 100%. The length of this is also important to note because you are so covered up here. Full long sleeves, it's... I mean, a mini is really the way to go. Now, not everybody likes wearing mini dresses. Like, I get that. But this is a vibe. Um, it's, again, also very mid-century-esque. Um, you know, if there were a lot of w working women back then, this is what they would have worn. This is what they would have wanted to wear. I'm also getting, like, subtle um, flight attendant vibes. Anybody else with me? I don't know where that's coming from, but... It's a super cute dress. It would look great on many, many, many occasions. Um, you just have to be into, you know, lengthening this, I think would not ruin it, but it would definitely change. Well, certainly it would change proportions, but it would change the like overall sort of feeling about the, about the dress. Um, I think it pretty much has to stay mini. Here's the back with your invisible back zipper. There are some seams here, but everything on this particular model seems to be so loose. And I don't know that that is the way that it's supposed to be. Did we see the back of the other? Yeah, see how it fit? Well, certainly she has a little bit bigger of a bum, so it fills that out a little bit more. But, you know, just everywhere it kind of fits better. There's also, oh yeah, here's the three-piece sleeve. So you have one along the top, one along the bottom and that gives you your three pieces. Yeah, it's a really, really cute dress. Um, lots of people, lots of different ages, lots of different shapes and sizes will be able to wear this. Um, so for that, I think it has like a lot of mass appeal. Um, but it is a definite like look like I think it'll be memorable dress you know where you wear it to an event or something not an event but to an occasion whether that be like date night girls night whatever and people will remember it so when you go to wear it again people will be like oh yeah there's that dress again <laughs> it still looks great but I remember last time you wore that so wool crepe gabardine linen yep all that makes sense 
um, invisible zipper, eight buttons, same sizing, and then just a little more than two yards of fabric. Dress B takes a little bit more. Why? Why does dress B take more? Even though it has the contrast fabric. The sleeves are the same. B must be a little bit longer. Which again is really hard to tell on this model because she's just... I mean, it looks to be the same distance from their knees, right? But I guess she's just taller and thinner and so it's just... I think this is just fitting her different maybe it looks a little bit longer but that's the only thing I see right other than the contrast yeah it's got to be the length oh no 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 oh you guys you guys you guys you guys you guys come on Lindsay's not using her brain are you yelling at the computer I'm sorry dress b is the one without the contrast so you had the different amounts of fabric because you don't have the separate fabric for the contrast it's all one okay that makes a lot more sense Okay, next up, we are into tops already. We've only got one, though, it looks like. So this is a Marcy Tilton. Um, she's new, known for, like, asymmetric, funky, funky stuff. Um, this appears to be the least funky Marcy Tilton I've seen in a while. Um, Loose-fitting knit top has set-in sleeves, neck variations, left front pocket detail, and asymmetric hemmbands. View E, I'm sorry, View A has contrast turn back cuffs. Turn back cuffs again, two in one collection. So it's actually a really, really cool, like modern sweatshirt tunic. Like I kind of quite like it. It does have this massive, like, I don't know what's happening here. Is that bias binding or I don't know. It's huge though. Very thick, I mean. And then your set in sleeve. There's a, there's a left-hand pocket. Oh, you can see right here, right in this seam. And then this also goes into this wide band. Yep, there's the turn back cuff. Perfect for those, like if you guys have watched my um, Stylemaker Fabric swatch reviews, she has a lot of knit fabrics that are reversible. Um, I remember one in this past collection might have had stripes and then dots. Or different color stripes, something I can't remember, but that would be a good way to use that type of fabric. Um, if you can find like a knit jacquard, that would also be good. That might be what this is. Or you can find a fabric that has two different colorways and then just combine them together. It's cool. I like it. Funky, fun, different. I think this fabric is a little bit lighter weight than this one, which is why this one is like the shape of it is standing out so much more. Um, but then how they paired that with the looser pant versus the more like legging fitting pant um, helps with that proportion a little bit. Cute, right? Fun. Fun, fun. All right. So that's that yardage we have moderate stretch knit so it doesn't even have to be that stretchy ponty lightweight i'm sorry jersey lightweight sweater knits wool double knit yeah any of those like sweater knits would be really good and then lining fabric piece of interfacing all your sizes are in one extra small to 2x and then here's your fabric requirements don't forget, top A has this contrast here. All right, moving on to skirts. We've got a couple of skirts to look at. This one is unlined, asymmetric wrap skirt, has front pleats, top stitching, stitched hem, inside ribbon ties, and length variations. View A has button closure. View B has purchased leather closure. Okay. So we've got the like V-shaped band at the top. The top of the V or the top of the waistband is what is hitting at your natural waist. All of this is going through your midsection and ends at your like high hip. And then you have the pleats that flare out below that. I think they used another synthetic leather for this. 
um, which is kind of cool that they use a leather clasp with it as well. This one has a button. You can see her hand is on her high hip. And then, of course, because it's like an asymmetric, you know, thing happening here, it is asymmetric on the bottom, too, which is fun. I quite like the wide band in the back. Um, really accentuates like a narrow waist. And, of course, like this scoop back bodysuit or whatever is super cute with it. Yeah, totally. I would totally, totally make this. Um, oh, and you can see here how it kind of functions. Um, it is a true wrap. So you have like a button or a snap and then the leather piece also ties. So kind of like a robe, if you want to imagine like how a robe would stay closed. Um, same thing with this skirt. Also, I do believe that's a little bit, a little bit easier to fit because you can move the button, you know, to accommodate some growth or some ungrowth, <laughs> some shrinkage. Um, and then do these uh, leather closures, the purchase one, do they have, like if it's a buckle, they have uh, multiple holes to buckle into. Um, so that could be like somewhat adjustable. But obviously super great to use for this leather fabric. They ended up hemming theirs, which eh, a little bit finicky, but um, you wouldn't even have to do that if you didn't want, because the leather is not going to come undone, you know? Okay, synthetic leather, rayon crepe, ponty knit, linen blends. And then you have your ribbon, a button, or a leather closure. Not a ton of fabric. The long one is two and an eighth yards, but the short one is like you've got a scrap of one and a half yards somewhere. Cool. That's fun. Different, you know? I haven't seen anything like that in a while or ever. Here is another skirt, button front, loose skirt, loose fitting through hip, has side pockets, front pleats, and length variations. View A has hook and bar at waistband and concealed front button closing. View B has self-covered buttons. Okay, so we've got a skirt that has a waistband that fits, like fitted, and sits at your natural waist. And then it kind of like flares out through the hips and then kind of comes in a little bit, actually. Um, but it also has this, is that a pleat? Is that the closure? I have to look at more pictures. Then you have this um, like scoop pocket. Okay, so this if this button's down the front, oh, they're open. How do you not see your goods? It must wrap around a little bit, which is hard to see in this vegan leather. But look at this opening. Okay, so this version with this like, uh, shaped opening it's like flat on the bottom and then kind of scoops that is like very 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 high fashion you know like runway type of design um it's very subtle but very wearable for the everyday person you know what I mean like you can wear this to Target, you know, like if you're on your way to somewhere else, maybe. <laughs> um, or, I don't know, throw it on with sneaks and then definitely wear it to Target. Um, you just have to make sure that the proportions are right. Obviously, she's very tall. Um, so if this opening is hitting right at the knee, I think that that's probably the best place for it. Again, she's super tall, so you might have to take some length out because if it's hitting at your ankle and this is hitting the ground, that's a that's a mess. The back is pretty simple. I also think it's hard to see with this fabric because there's so many different pieces, but this is, I think, just a center back seam and none of these other things are seams, I think. I'm not entirely sure. We'll look at the line drawings, obviously. Oh, see, there's not even a center back seam. So that was just the fabric. Um, you do have some darts here. A little hard for her to fill out the darts. Is this the redhead? Yeah. Um, so there's that. Might be a, They're just a little long on her because she doesn't have much curves. But super cool. 
I want to see the line drawing. Yeah. Oh, it's hidden. Okay. So it does button close, but it's hidden. So that's actually quite cool. And then you have these like drapier ish um, pleats and folds that kind of become part of the pocket. And then, like I said, it kind of comes out at the hip and then back down again. Um, which for someone like me who is a pear shape, I think that that is really, really super cool and accentuate your curves and I'm not here to hide mine. I just want them to look the best they possibly can. Um, and I don't think that would make them look bigger. I think that it would just give your body the curve. It would just give the appearance of the curves that your body naturally has, in my opinion. Um, so I actually quite like this one. Um, synthetic leather again, medium weight crepe, rayon chalet, crepe back satin. I mean, I don't see why you couldn't make it in all kinds of fabrics. Certainly the drapier it is, the less that the, you know, shape of the skirt will stand away from your body, but super cool. Six buttons, waistband hook and eye, or seven, like, button cover you know, I'm talking about those little kits where you smoosh it into like a little plastic ring. One and a half yards for the short one. And then the longer one is just two yards. So you could definitely, and then probably two, it wouldn't even be two yards because most of us are going to have to remove some length from the longer one. All right, here are our synthetic leather pants. If you are wondering why every single um, pattern has some version in synthetic leather. It's because that's how trendy synthetic leather is for this fall and winter. It is everywhere, everywhere. Um, if you've never worked with it, it can be a little bit troublesome, especially depending on the quality of your synthetic leather, but it's very, 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 very trendy right now. All right, close fitting, tapered, high waist crop pants have waist facings, fly front zipper, side front seams, front pockets, back waist starts, carriers, and then view A has ankle ties. Cool. These fit her incredibly well. Like, I don't know that I've seen a uh, sample model pant situation as good as this one. Um, it's like they were made for her, which is never the case. They obviously did not make these for her, but they look so good on her. Everything looks good. Um, you do have this like paper bag waist situation, purchase belt, and then all these seaming details with the little pockets. Um, like they rattled off all of those little details. Here's the ankle tie. Super cool, super chic. Here it is in non-synthetic leather, much less, much what do I say? Much more ill-fitting. <laughs> it fits a lot worse. You can see that the crotch is way too low. The curve is way too big. The redhead here, I don't know what her story is, if she was like a last minute addition to the models, but she's clearly too small for the fit samples that they make. You've seen it throughout this entire collection. Everything she wears is like just she's like a hanger it's just hanging on her it's not actually like she's not filling anything out um which I'm sure will make her very successful in a lot of like high fashion stuff but when you're doing you know kind of ready to wear or things for the everyday woman the fit sample I think is going to be a little bit larger which we can see you know so you know like I said I don't know if she was like the only option or what the deal was but um all the clothes she's wearing are too big for her which doesn't really bother me too much but I'm wondering if like someone who's new to sewing patterns or new to Vogue I don't think that that would really mess with anyone I think you can pretty much look at the clothing and tell when it's too big and too small right either way all that to say, here are the pants in a non-leather. <laughs> this is more of like a suiting. Um, we've omitted the ties and you can kind of just see the shape of them a little bit better. Here's the back. These, I mean, if this girl did not take these pants home, someone needs to ship them to her, like mail them to her. They fit her so, so, so good. So good. Anyways, here it is in the back. We do have center back seam obviously then we've got is this two darts in the back 
that could explain a lot of why it's fitting so well. Here's her. She's like, if you can't tell, she's standing with her hips pushed back so that she's filling out. Can you tell how she's got her tush pushed backwards and like more of a curve in her back? Can you see that? Um, just a little modeling trick. Maybe I learned that from like America's Next Top Model because I've never modeled. But I don't know why I know that, honestly. <laughs> Either way, um, the back curve does look a lot better when she does that and it can fill it out a little bit more. But um, it does look like we have four back darts, which is amazing. I love that so much. Those leather ones are impeccable. It, I don't know that that necessarily means that they're drafted in a way that's going to fit all of us that good. Um, it might just be like a perfect storm with that model, her measurements, the sample size, the leather they used, all that. But man, those look, if I could make pants that look that good, oh God, I would be making and wearing them all the time. But um, the four back darts do give me a lot of promise. It's just extra um, extra shaping through the waist, which is what I need because my hips are so much wider than my waist is. I think I would be inclined to give these a try. Uh, again, not like running to the store to get them, but I hope that lots of you do. <laughs> um, cause they are super cool, super on trend. They look, they clearly have the potential to look great. All right, stretch crepe, stretch leather, stretch sateen. Yeah, that stretch quality is really helping as well. She does have her hand in her pockets. I know you guys are probably saying, but she has her hand in her pockets. Yes, she does. But I don't think that it's in a way that they're hiding any flaws. There's actually not a single picture of the front without hands in pockets. Um... But it doesn't look like it's pulling anything up, down, or it doesn't look like it's trying to camouflage anything. It Lord knows this woman's not camouflaging a single thing. Um, yeah, those look really good. <laughs> those look really, really good. Um, and the only difference are the ankle ties. That's the only difference. Look how different, right? Like the length through here is not an optical illusion. I mean, it is an optical illusion. She's not that long waisted. You know what I mean? Like the proportions on those are really just something else. Um, and then the length too, you can see that the length looks totally different. All right. All you need is a zipper for this one. Um, same size ranges we've been seeing on every pattern and then just half an inch difference or half a yard difference on the fabric requirements. Okay, cool. Fun pants. Now we have a jumpsuit here for the jumpsuit. Loose fitting through bust elastic waist jumpsuit has front and back sleeves has front back and sleeves gathered into neck binding. Okay. I wasn't reading that correctly with self ties. So it's like a drawstring neckline. Raglan sleeves are elasticized at lower edge, side seam pockets, invisible bag zipper, and then leg variations. Okay. So it's like a drawstring neckline. So you insert this drawstring through this kind of like a casing and then you know, get in and out of it that way. That's one way to make this like adjustable to get over your shoulders and hips. You've got a little keyhole because of that. Nice, big, thick, elastic side seam pockets, elastic um, sleeve cuffs. And then this one has a tapered leg with a with elastic there as well. But you also have this wide leg version, which is just really, really beautiful. I mean, the proportions on a jumpsuit like this with the long sleeve, somewhat covered up neckline, cinched in waist. It's just beautiful. You also have a center back zipper, um, which 
concerns me a little bit that it's going through this elastic. Like that can be a little bit difficult to manage, but it's Vogue. So you got to imagine they're giving you like the couture techniques to learn how to finish that in a way that isn't bulky and difficult. Um, also, I stand corrected about the neckline. It's not a drawstring casing because there's a center back zipper, so it can't go all the way through. But I think all of these gather, the back, the sleeves, and the front all gather into some kind of bias binding. And then the neckline, and then the drawstring, I don't, that clearly has to come undone, right? So maybe, I don't know, I can't figure it out in my head, but this is clearly not a drawstring because you have that center back zipper. So maybe the bias binding becomes the ties. That's possible. That's probably what it is. All right. Yardage, charmeuse, chalet, lightweight jersey, lightweight crepe. I think that navy one was lightweight crepe, which is so nice because um, it gives weight you know, it's like a weighty, a weighty fabric, but still drapey. I think that's the perfect combination for like a wide leg jumpsuit. Um, heavy, well, relatively heavy and still drapey, which is why crepe is so great. Okay, 22 inch zipper, elastic, and more elastic. Okay, all the sizes in one, but it only goes up to extra. Extra large, extra large too, extra large. I think this is obviously supposed to be extra small and it only goes up to extra large, which I I don't know the finished garment measurements. You'd have to look at the pattern envelope, but um, that, well, that hip is very um, loose fitting. So maybe, maybe I could fit into these. I think my hip is actually a 22 at this point. So um, these would work for me, but I'm not plus size like in the stores. So if you are size 18 in the stores, 20 in the stores, this is going to be too small for you. But like I said, there is some ease in the hip. So that helps a little bit. All right. What do we have next? Another little, oh my gosh, look at that fabric. Who recognizes the fabric? Wow. They've held onto that for a long time. This is that double brush poly that I made my sew along dress out of last year. How fun. Okay. Mrs. and Mrs. Petite wrap, robe, belt, top, dress, and pants. So it is a wardrobe pattern. I love these. You get all of this stuff. Um, loose fitting robe has shawl collar, drop shoulders, side seam pockets, and matching belt. Fitted top has neck line band drop shoulders, shaped hem, side slits. Tank dress, fitted through the bust, has neckline and armhole bands, shaped hem. Close fitting above ankle length pants have elastic waist. So this is like a very cash comfy set, all knit. Um, there's the, that's the robe without anything else on. <laughs> um, this is the tank dress fitted through the bust, but then um, comes out to an A line. Does it have some seams? I don't think so. And then the hem is curved. It also has, um, these are the bands that they're talking about. So super easy to finish. There's the robe again, dress again. I mean, I guess technically she could have the dress on under the robe, but I don't think she does. And then here's the little, like, casual matching knit, like, loungewear set. Super popular, super cute. Possibly not quite enough stretch in the, in the fabric for these pants because they're so close fitting or so, um, yeah, close fitting. The fabric does seem to be like stretched to the max to get over her thigh, which is why you're getting this like white sheen. Um, so just pay attention that you have enough stretch in your fabric. 
cute though, right? Okay, here are our line drawings. So this is what they're calling the robe with the shawl collar. It does give like coat vibes, you know, um, and you even have carriers for the belt, which is rare. And then side seam pockets. And then you have your kind of basic, you know, sweatshirt situation. Here's your basic tank dress. There are no seams or darts or anything happening. And then here are your um, leggings. Okay. Cool, cool. Let's see what the... Yeah, 50% cross grain stretch, they're saying. Um, my inclination is that this will probably fit with 30% stretch. This doesn't necessarily need any stretch, but this needs 50% or more. Um, so I would, if it were me, although this colored set in the emerald green is so pretty, I would try and find like an athletic legging, um, fabric that has, you know, a lot of stretch plus recovery plus compression. I think you'll be happier. You're probably only going to find that in like blacks and grays. So then you'd have to get this top in a black or gray but a different fabric for the top, like sweatshirting or ponty or something like that. I just feel like these are a little bit too close fitting for the kind of fabric that you could make this out of. You could also add to the thigh and bum of this, like reduce the seam allowances or physically like add to your pattern to make these a little more loose fitting um, to where they fit a little bit more like the stretch through here is good. The stretch through here, I feel like is a little too tight. I don't think they're too small for her. I just think that there's the fabric doesn't have enough stretch. So something to keep in mind when you're picking out your fabrics and then you just need a little bit of elastic for this. All the sizes are included in one, um, in one envelope. Um, which makes it great for gifts because you could trace off the different sizes and make a set for everyone in your family. Um, and then the fabric requirements, three yards for the robe, one and three quarters for the top, which that's kind of surprising. Uh, two and one eighth for the dress and one and a quarter for the pants. Yeah, this seems like a lot for the top. But nonetheless, that's what they're saying. You won't know until you get into it. But that is the last women's pattern. We have a robe. Yep, they're saying men's robe and belt. But again, I don't know why women couldn't wear this. It would just be like a little bit oversized in the shoulders, which, you know, everyone kind of likes that anyways. Not much to it. Um, here are the line drawings. Kind of long. But I guess it looks proportional on, on the models. Um, a two-piece sleeve, which, you know, if you're going to go, go big, right? It is Vogue after all. Um, you even have the notched collar in addition to the shawl collar and then your three patch pockets. So that's quite the robe. And then this is a pant, a little jogger. You can tell they're kind of styling it for streetwear. So you have like the moto details in one. Um, you have your waistband that has like channels um, for your elastic and your drawstring, slant pockets, and then everybody has this back seaming detail. Oh, and then cuffs too. I'm assuming, oh, they did contrast cuffs. I'm ass is, Are these the moto ones? Yeah, so you can see that seaming there. It's very subtle, very subtle. Um, but I think, I think guys would probably like that. So it doesn't feel so slouchy, you know, it doesn't feel so much like, uh, sweatpants. Um, but sweatshirt fleece, French terry or cotton knits, and then contrast rib knits. So they're not necessarily calling for, um, ribbing, which is different than rib knit. Right? Right. Um, you can just make this out of scrap rib knit fabric. 
So that's cool gift idea for the dudes or honestly chicks too. And then, oh my gosh, look at this porcelain doll of a model. Um, we're not going to review the kids clothes. Oh, there's a little Asian baby. Oh, so cute. But please go look at them. If you have little ones in your life that you just want to dress up in the cutest clothes I've ever seen. I mean, look at this pose. So stinking cute. Her little rosy cheeks. Oh my goodness. I can't handle it. Look at that pose. She is ready for Instagram. <laughs> but you guys, that is Vogue Winter. Um, what do we think? Um, here is, oh no, there's no winter book. Winter lookbook. Well, that's disappointing. Hold on, let me try and find it. Sometimes they have it down here. Oh, 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 oh. Um, while I'm trying to figure this out, you guys... Let me know what you think um, of the collection. They do not have the lookbook. Sometimes it's over here. Um, let me know what you guys think of this new winter collection. Keeping in mind that we're looking at Vogue here, and it's, I don't know that a lot of this stuff is meant for everyday wear, but let me know your thoughts on the patterns. Are you going to be getting any of them? If so, which ones? And are you going to be getting them to make right away? Are you getting them just to add to your collection? Or are you... Like, what's, what's the story? Um, let me know. Tell me everything um, in the comments section below. Um, but otherwise, that's going to do it for me. I have linked here in the end slate the last First Impression Friday that I did, if you want to get caught up um, on that. But hopefully, we'll be seeing a couple more winter um, collections from Big Four. I, of course, I will keep you posted as they are available. Thanks so much for watching. See you all very soon. Bye.